But hey, they've still got soul. Hey Vibes, I'm back and today we're gonna be checking out a brand new doll line from Mattel. <laughs> Why did I do this like something's gonna appear? Here it is, it is called Creatable World. And um, they're kind of big and in the way, so I'm just gonna put them back down. Now these are a brand new doll line, they literally just came out this week and I'm actually super excited about that because if they came out in the future, I might not be doing this review for you. So let's just take a moment to appreciate that. Okay, moment's over. <laughs> so if you haven't heard of these before, this is actually pretty exciting and something that should have existed a long time ago in my opinion. This new doll line from Mattel is actually gender neutral. So we won't be getting males, we won't be getting females, but what we will get is a brand new line of dolls that come with great accessories, a good variety of skin tones, and an excellent price. To be honest, right now everything sounds like a 10 out of 10. That sounds like a solid win to me, but we do of course still need to check out the dolls and what they'll be like. Now, before we move on, I'm going to say regardless of the outcome, this is a step in the right direction and I honestly hope more toy companies follow suit. In this new line, there are six different doll kits that you can get. However, they've decided to only release five to me here in Canada, so that's all I'm working with today. But if you're in the States, you'll be able to pick the kits up for $30 each at Target, Walmart, or on Amazon, and most likely on the Mattel website. And if you're in Canada like me, you can pick these up for between $40 and $45 pre-tax at Toys R Us, Walmart, and Mastermind Toys, which is where I got mine, because currently, Toys R Us and Walmart are only offering them online. And lastly, these kits are recommended for children over the age of six and not for those under three because they do contain small parts. One, two, three. Ah! I need two more. Hold on. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you all five of the boxes that I have because honestly, once we get down to the table, they're not really gonna fit in the frame. This is DC619. It's almost like they have product numbers because they don't wanna identify them as one thing or another, which is great. This one is DC220. This one is DC414. Next is DC725. And the last one that I have is DC073. And sadly, I don't know the code for the sixth doll, but once I figure it out, I will put it in the description in case you want to see it for yourself. And now we can go down to the table, open up our dolls, and see what they're like. Here is our first box, and I'm going to quickly show you what's over here, but after that I'm going to go ahead and open all the dolls, because other than the artwork and the little number identifying which one you get, the packaging is all the same. So each box is going to be split by white and yellow, and on the yellow side it says Creatable World and has a visual checklist of what you can expect to receive inside, which includes one doll, one wig, one jacket, two shirts, two pairs of pants, one skirt, three pairs of shoes, one pair of glasses, one hat, and one tote bag. And then the rest of the package will show off the doll wearing the different accessories that you can get inside, giving us a little inspiration on what we can try. And these are the deluxe character kits. And now we open. So the only thing holding this together is two little pieces of tape. Underneath that we have this poster type piece of paper and it's showing all the pictures that were on the outside of the box. And underneath that we have one piece of plastic holding in our doll and all of the accessories. There's no plastic little jibbers to cut off, no surprise bags to open, we know if we have all of our accessories because they all have a spot to go back to, and it's 100% recyclable. Now that I'm done apparently fangirling over some plastic, great job Mattel by the way, I'm gonna take out my doll and try on the accessories. Starting with the wig that keeps wanting to fall out. That was honestly the easiest removal of a toy I've ever experienced. That's incredible. Here is our first doll, and as you can see, it is standing completely unassisted. Coming straight from the box, our doll has short black hair, light brown eyebrows, brown eyes, pale lips, a black tank top, a black pair of shorts, and a pale skin complexion. And upon closer inspection, I'm not finding any scratches or defects. And when it comes to the hair, it is super, super glued. Now a quick check for the rooting tells me it is nice and full. Honestly, once you brush this out and give it a wash, it'll be perfectly fine. The head of the doll moves up, down, left, right, and completely turns. And we also have movement in the shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, and feet. And it's more than just back and forth because we can also move them all the way around. Which gives us a lot of freedom when we're trying to pose our dolls. And the joints seem to be nice and fluid. Not that they're liquid, but they're not stiff. That's what I'm getting at. Our doll is awkwardly standing, unassisted, so that we can check out the back of the outfit. So the tank top opens with a long piece of velcro in the back, and it seems to be stitched together pretty nicely. There's one- ah! Don't drop! There are one or two little pieces of loose thread up at the top, but when I pull on them, they aren't coming undone, so that's not too bad. And the shorts just pull down because they're held on with an elastic band. Let's give them a check. 
Once again, they look pretty good. And now I'm going to take off the shirt because we're going to try on a different outfit anyways. And while we're here, we can see that this body is indeed a blank canvas. Not a boy and not a girl. We can make it whatever we want. I'm amazed by this posability right now. It's definitely because the doll has flat feet. And put it back here just in case. And then we'll take a quick peek at our accessories, starting with the wig. This one is long and black. It's very nicely rooted and you can see all the burnt plastic inside so that the hair stays in place. And you'll be able to see it when you put it on the doll's head, but it's still definitely better than the LOL one. So as is the case for any new and hairy item, the first few uses will definitely produce some shedding. Next up we have an orange, blue, light blue, green, and tan camo skirt. Not gonna lie, I don't really think these colors go well together, but then again, I have yellow nails, so who am I to judge? It opens and closes in the back with two small pieces of Velcro, and a quick look inside tells me that it's stitched together quite nicely, although it is kind of stiff and rough. We have a pair of shoes, and they are white on top with baby blue soles. They have nice little details like stitching and laces and tread on the bottom. Our next item is a blue tote bag, and there's a really nice painted lion on the front of it. It's like multicolored and rainbow. It's got two long straps, and you can actually put things inside. Let's see if our shoes fit. Perfect, it's like a beach bag. We have a pair of light blue jeans, and they actually feel like they're denim. There are even three little denim patches. A regular blue, a light blue, and then like a black blue. They open at the back with one piece of Velcro. The stitching looks pretty good, but I think they have pockets. Sorta, kinda, not really, but yes. If the doll's hands could fit in there, it's gonna look like they're able to pose themselves with their hands in their pockets. That's kinda cool. Oh, I lied. There is one random stitch sewn right across the front. As long as my doll's legs can go in, it's not a problem. I can cut that, but I mean, lame. Next up is our second pair of shoes, and they're a black high top boot. And they're really nicely detailed. They've got laces, stitching, and tread on the bottom, but they've also got some individually painted little silver eyelets. They're really nice boots. Next is a bright blue trench coat. I mean, it's not really a trench coat because it's not super long, but it's similar. So it kind of feels like a soft denim, and it comes with a high collar as well as a belt. And a quick check reveals that the entire piece is very nicely put together. We have a really cute little pair of glasses. It's one solid piece of plastic and the frames on front are painted black. Next we have a little white t-shirt with a little rainbow painted monkey on the front swinging from a tree branch. It opens at the back with one long piece of velcro and this one is perfect inside and the velcro actually feels like it's melted to the shirt. We have a really interesting pair of like shants which is what I like to call them. They're like short pants and everybody makes fun of it but it's my thing. I don't know what they're called but they're the really saggy low crotched pants. I don't know what to call them. Each end has a little elastic in it so it will scrunch around the leg or calf or whatever and it opens and closes in the back with one piece of velcro. And a quick look inside it tells me that it is stitched together quite nicely. Not gonna lie this is not my favorite look. It kind of looks like a big saggy diaper. But hey it matches my nails. Next we have a red French beret and it's made out of a piece of red felt with a little teeny red ribbon on top. It looks really nice too. Next ah, dropping things is our third pair of shoes and they're a little silver pair of pizza toed flats. And our last article of clothing is a long sleeve dress shirt with white and blue stripes, a high collar, cute little wrists, four little silver buttons, and the entire thing is splattered in paint. Our doll is an artist, it is. Now we can try out some looks. All right, so far I have put on the white monkey t-shirt and the denim jeans. Now I'm gonna test out what the pockets are like. What? How cool is that? Our doll is just chilling. Now let's try on a pair of shoes. And our doll can go from barefoot to fancy in like however many seconds it takes for me to click on these shoes. Still holding itself upright. Now let's add the hair to see what that's like. You know what? This is not as bad as I thought it was going to be because the little plastic bit almost looks as though it's a headband separating the back hair from the bangs that was really the previous hair that was already attached. Not too shabby. Let's add a beret and call it a day. Look number one, complete. Oh man, guys, I forgot to tell you the quality of the shirt. It was good. Pretend I got that on time, okay? So now my doll is wearing the really ugly camo skirt with the paint splattered shirt and I'm going to add the black combat style boots. Since my doll's an artist, we need a bag and glasses. I wanna see how they stay on. Oh snap. Oh, you can't even see. This is such a great idea and I'm loving it. I'm sure you guys would love to watch me dress this doll up all day to see what I could come up with, but you're gonna need something to do for yourself. So I'm gonna set it to the side and move on to the next doll kit. Next up we have doll DC725. 
Once again, we have a poster showing off a bunch of different looks as well as the other dolls in the collection. Looks like the doll I don't have is DC826. And now we can see our doll and all the accessories with one piece of plastic holding it in. As funny as this looks, honestly, I fiddled around with this doll for a few minutes and this is the only way I could get it to stand unassisted. Coming straight from the box, our second doll has a very cool hairstyle as well as brown eyebrows, eyes, nude lip color, and a dark skin complexion. It also comes wearing a white tank top and a white pair of shorts. Just like the first doll, this one has the same articulation points which I've tested out and they all work very well. The only thing is, as mentioned, I had a bit of difficulty getting it to stand unassisted. Now we'll go in for a close up of the makeup to see if there's any defects, and I'm not noticing any, which makes me really happy. And now we can see the cool hairstyle. So there's very thick curls concentrated in the top center of the head, almost like a really wide mohawk. The rest of the head is left bald with a painted scalp with two shaved lines in it. Honestly, it just looks really cool. And a quick check of both the shorts and tank top tells me that they're really nicely made. And now the accessories. First up, we'll check out these shoes. They're white with a blue and white tile pattern on top. There's not much detailing, but hey, they've still got soul. Next up, we have a white and red varsity jacket. The red portion feels like a soft denim, and there are five little white buttons, and the sleeves are white and feel like pleather, and there's a little bit of red at the wrist. A quick check inside tells me that it's all stitched together really nicely. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of these clothes. We have a little pair of glasses, and these ones are gray plastic with black painted frames. We have a little pair of dark blue denim shorts. They've got a little gold button, some brown stitching, and the bottom bottom of the shorts have folded in edges. The one leg is a bit choppier than the other. It's kind of realistic, I guess. They open in the back with a single piece of Velcro and the stitching is pretty good too. And do these ones have pockets? No. Next is our hat and this kind of freaks me out. I don't know how to explain this. It's a hard, squishy rubber plastic, but the brim of it is very soft and floppy. The top's got some indentations to make it seem more hat-like and realistic. And then just where the brim meets the center of the hat, we have some fake little their straps. Oh, and it's a light tan color. Next is our second pair of shoes. These ones are bright red and they have little details like the front of the toe, stitching, laces, eyelets, and then teeny lines for the soles of the shoe. And they're basically high top converse. Next up we have this galaxy tote bag with super vibrant colors. There is purple, pinks, light blues, dark blues, dark purples, and lots of little white stars. And the straps are long pieces of black ribbon. We have a three colored blue tulle skirt and it goes from light blue all the way to dark blue with some light blue fabric underneath. It's not as stiff and hard as I thought it would be considering it's a puffy tulle skirt. Surprisingly soft inside and nicely put together. Next is our wig and this one has hundreds, maybe not hundreds, but a lot of mini little micro braids. I can't help but wonder if this is a machine that does it or a person. Because if it was a person, man, that is love. The braids themselves feel really cool and because it feels thick, they don't have to use much, but if you separate it, you'll see that there's a lot of different bald spots in between the rooting rows. Once again, a look on the inside will reveal all the places where the hair has melted to the plastic so that it doesn't fall apart on you. And the braids themselves are black and dark brown and have a part down the center. We have a multi-striped horizontal colorful shirt with reds, yellows, oranges, blues, greens, and that's it. On the back, those horizontal lines become like upward pointing chevrons or triangles. And after checking the inside, I can say that it looks good too. Next up is our third pair of shoes and this time we have some super shiny silver cowboy boots with black soles and there's a lot of stitching and little details on them. Coming down to the wire here our last two outfits and the first one is a black shirt with pink and red roses with green leaves on the front and it's a very stiff feeling bow silk. It's got a high collar in the front except mine is warped in on itself so that's a little unfortunate. Other than that it looks pretty nice and it opens at the back with one long piece of velvet. However, once again, mine appears to be ruined because there's a lot less fabric on the one side versus the other, so it goes crooked. It's possible it's supposed to look that way, but I doubt it. See, much bigger on one side than the other. Hopefully when we put it on the doll, you won't notice it quite as much. And lastly, a pair of camo pants. This time we have three different colors of green with white stitching. And on top, we can see that that white stitching is not at its greatest. Now let's check the back. One little piece of Velcro stitching inside. There are a few loose little threads hanging down, but they aren't going anywhere when I pull them, so that's not too bad. And once again, guys, we have little pockets. Now time to dress our doll. Okay, guys, here is my first look, and honestly, I don't know if I want to change it because I like it so much, but I decided to 
to try on this top because I wanted to see what the collar would be like and hopefully now you can see what I mean. Mine is kind of warped and sort of glued or melted together, not sure what process they use, but it makes it so that the collar is stuck to itself and won't come out. And then on the back, you can see what I meant about it being wonky and having less fabric on one side and too much on the other. Now that I have it on the doll, I can see that the pants are also crooked. Good stuff. Maybe I should try a different look. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I am kind of loving this look right now, but I feel as though I should try on the wig, so I will. I don't think this braided wig works quite as well with the plastic looking like a headband. I mean, it's not the worst. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this wig, but I do really, really love this look, so uh, I'm gonna leave it, okay? High five. And I'll just clean up and get started on my third doll. Our next doll is DC619. Don't fall. Try again. <gasps> oh, I love that top. Here is our third doll, and once again, I am having trouble getting it to stand unassisted, but I figured out why. This time, the super articulated feet are a little too, not necessarily loose, but easy to move. So each time I put it down flat, the foot bends forward so that the doll tips forward, which makes it unable to stand. Well, that's a problem, so I'm just gonna have to hold it. Coming straight from the box, this doll has a short cut hairstyle, and it's sort of a strawberry blonde light brown color and it is super sculpted. Check out that ear. And the bangs are like super glued to the forehead. What is going on? The eyebrows are a light reddish brown color. We've got green eyes and a pale pink lip. Our doll has a pale skin complexion, more of a peachy hue in comparison to the first doll. And once again, comes wearing a tank top and shorts, this time in white. Guys, I don't know how this is happening, but I'm literally hearing my voice change as I film. I think I'm getting sick and I'm really, really scared. Now we're gonna move on to check out the accessories before I lose my voice entirely. First up, we have a shiny blue and black pair of snake skin patterned pants. And although for some reason I assumed they'd be starchy, they aren't. They're very soft and smooth. And a quick look inside tells me this is pretty much the best stitching I've ever seen on a small pair of doll pants. And the waist is an elastic band. Did I ruin my nails? Ugh. Next up, we have a purple basketball jersey with white stitching around the collar and sleeves, except they're not sleeves because it's a tank top. And there's also a vinyl number number nine and one on the front. A quick look at the back tells me we might have the same problem we did with the rose jacket from earlier. Once again, we have a little bit of fabric on the left and a lot more on the right. Luckily, everything on the inside looks pretty good. We have a teal baseball hat and it's got a ton of stitched on little details, a button on top, and it even has functioning snaps to adjust. And that's a really thoughtful addition because some of those wigs are definitely gonna add some bulk and you wanna make sure your hat can fit. Next, we're gonna take a look at this long sleeve red plaid shirt. Shirt. And you may remember earlier, I was pretty excited, and that's because I love me a good plaid shirt. So our shirt is red, it's got long sleeves, it's got a collar, five little white buttons, everything looks pretty good. Now we'll just open the front to check the stitching. And I'm really happy to announce that it all looks great. The fabric itself feels a bit starchy, but I think it will soften up after some use. We have another flat pair of van-like tennis shoes. Are they tennis shoes? I don't know. Basically, they're the exact same as the ones that came with the second doll, except this time, the tile pattern is black and white. Moving on, we find this super shiny black pleather jacket. What is going on with that arm there? Is it just tucked in? Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it was just tucked in. Oh man, they almost tricked me. I thought that was a zipper. Looks like we've got some metallic silver and black ribbon lining the edge of the jacket, making it look like there's a zipper, but there's not. Oh, and we've got a high collar. Let's uh, check the inside. Oh, that's cool. The inside honestly looks like the jackets that you could separate into a vest or a smaller jacket. It's separate from the sleeves. That's kind of neat. I've never seen that before. Usually the fabric stops just inside of the lapel and you can see all the stitching, but no, I'm actually quite impressed by this. We have another pair of glasses. This time the plastic is clear and the frames are painted blue. Next we have a light blue soft denim skirt. Along the left side there are five small silver buttons and if we flip it around to the back you'll see that it opens with one piece of velcro and a quick peek inside tells me everything is stitched pretty nicely. We have our second pair of shoes, or in this case boots, and these ones are black with silver studs, straps, and buckles. Next up, we'll take a look at our tote bag, and this one is blue with a green over flap. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what I'm calling it, as well as two silver clasps, and the strap is made with a long piece of black ribbon. Can it open? 
It can! That's exciting. And is held together with one little piece of Velcro. Make sure we can stick things in it. This one's a little tight. We can't fit both shoes in. We're a little too broke to afford two shoes today. Probably because I spent like $230 on dolls. We have a super artsy pair of shorts. And by that, I mean we have some very shiny long black shorts covered in paint splats, which are green, pink, orange, and blue. And uh, if we flip it inside out, we can see that everything is stitched together pretty nicely. Next, we'll take a look at our wig. And this one is strawberry blonde or a nice golden honey brown. This one is very similar to the first wig we got in the sense that we have some long straight hair and it feels pretty soft. Taking a look at the back, we can see that there's still a ton of rooting and I'm not even gonna try to count the rows, but just take my word for it, there's a lot there. And if we look inside, we can see all the burnt plastic that prevents the hair from falling out. And it seems like it's doing its job because it's not really all over my table. Just like before, we'll be able to see the plastic when we put this on our doll and hopefully it's gonna look like a hairband again and not just some weird plastic cap on a doll's head, but we'll have to see once that happens. Moving on to our last accessory, we have a white pair of tennis shoes with red soles. For the most part, the overall quality of everything is good, but there's just like one or two random items. That's what gets me. Now that we've checked out all the accessories, we can dress our doll. This is looking good so far. That looks horrible. Okay, the wigs need some work. We're, we're gonna have to say that. The wig that came with the first doll seemed to work a lot better as a headband and less of a weird cap, and this one is definitely the weird cap with a very weird gap. But maybe it will get better if we add a bag. What do you think? I'm gonna go with no. My second look is complete. I decided to try layering different articles to see how overwhelming it would be on the doll's tiny frame. And to be honest, it doesn't look too bad. For the most part, it can definitely be done. And quickly before I set my doll to the back, I'll just mention that there were no defects on the face, which was really nice. And underneath all that producty hair, there was some really good rooting. There's clearly a preference growing for the short haired dolls. And I feel like we need to try this one last time. It's still not okay. Oh my gosh, maybe we can hide it with a hat. No, it looks terrible. Moving on to our fourth doll. Flawless. Here's our card, and here is the stuff that's under it. And a wig. Here's our doll straight from the box, and with a little bit of help, I got it to stand upright. By me, I mean not me at all. That was totally someone else. Give credit where it's due, folks. The doll comes with a short-ish, curly, blonde, and brown bob, maybe? I don't really know. But uh, what I do know is it's got brown eyebrows, green eyes, a nude lip color, a tan skin complexion, and is wearing a black tank top with a matching pair of shorts. Aces. And going in for a quick close-up, we can see that there's one small little mark underneath the right eye, but other than that, everything looks really good. Let's check out the hair really quick. It's nice and full and very, very soft. And quickly before I move on, I'll just mention the tank top and the shorts looked really good inside too. First up, we have a green, no, what? We have a blue hoodie. Yes, I know my primaries. Green's not in the primaries. We've got some long sleeves and a real zipper. <gasps> and it zips, no way. Definitely did not expect that. Inside it looks pretty good, kind of choppy, but no holes, so that's nice. And can we zip it back up? It's a real question. Cause I have real life troubles with real life zippers, so I'd be the one to screw up. <gasps> It works. I'm pretty excited right now. Who could be that excited about a zipper? This girl. And we've got an oversized hood. So once we try that on our doll, we'll be able to see if it's too big or just big enough. With some of these crazy wigs, we definitely need a bigger hood. Next up, we have this gray blue pair of short pants. It's got a very tight elastic waist and everything inside looks like it's stitched together quite nicely. The pants themselves are pretty stretchy, but I'm assuming they'll be quite tight around the calf or ankle, depending on where you cinch it because the bottoms are elasticized. We have some pink flat shoes, kind of resembling Zan Zans, oh no, sort of resembling Vans and the bottoms are white. Next up, we have a vertically striped tote bag with lots of different colors like pink, blue, white, green, orange, yellow, and light blue. And instead of ribbons for straps, this time we have matching fabric. We gotta try it. Yay, we're rich again. We can have two shoes. This is big news. We have a lime green t-shirt. It is very large actually, so this must be a comfortable fit. And on the front, we've got a teal and green tiger. The material is pretty soft, and on the back, we have one piece of Velcro holding it together. And a quick look inside tells me that everything is a-okay. Wait, maybe not. Nope, everything is still a-okay. Hey, against this shirt, my nails don't look that putrid. That's good news. Next up, we have a really shiny long sleeve silver shirt with two black bands around each of the upper sleeve. Overall, it's shiny and silver, but very, very soft. And on the back, it opens with one long piece of Velcro and a quick look inside tells me that everything is stitched together quite nicely. Wow, that's actually very, very soft. We have our glasses. Aviators, no way! You gotta have the feeling, the emotion. Okay, and these ones are a gray plastic with the frames painted silver. Ooh, 
they're dark. Next up, we have some dark aqua pizza toad flats, and they've got no soul. Well, they have soul, but they're flat, so does it really count? Next is our wig, and this time the hair is long and a mix of blonde and brown curls. Once again, we have that super tacky plastic portion, which hopefully will look better this time. And inside, we can see all the burnt up bits of the hair so that it doesn't fall out on us. The hairstyle is pretty simple with a part on the left and just zhuzhed down. And a quick look in the back tells me that it's got the same amount of rooting as all the others, excluding the braids because obviously they were braided. We have our last pair of shoes, or in this case, boots. And these ones are shiny metallic silver combat boots or army boots. And they've got lots of little details like stitching, laces, and black tread on the bottom. Next, we have a beanie and I'm not gonna lie, I am probably way too excited about this, but for one good reason. First of all, it's a dark teal color and inside it's pretty nicely stitched, but truth be told, it is really, really small. I would love to see this fit over one of those massive heads. So we're definitely gonna have to try that out. We have a skirt and this one feels like a straight up umbrella. It's got diagonally striped lines of black, white, blue, and coral. Starting at the top left, leading down all the way to the bottom of the skirt and round, we've got a ruffle or a fringe. And although it looks like it might open at the side, it doesn't. For that, you'll have to turn it to the back where you'll find one small piece of Velcro and we can check how it's stitched. It looks pretty good. It's a lot softer in here too. Maybe we should just put it on our doll like this. We have a pair of overalls and I'm probably way too excited about these. Maybe not quite as excited as I was for this little beanie or toque if you're a Canadian, but still exciting nonetheless because they feel like a really good quality white denim because apparently white denim has a quality feel and they're covered in paint splats of pink blue and yellow at the top of the overalls we have one big pocket two small silver buttons and two straps and when we turn it around we'll find one small little piece of velcro and a quick peek inside tells me that everything looks great and they remind me of dickies am i allowed to say dickies guess what this is not a kids channel dickies I've got so many different random thoughts going in my head i don't know what to pick but it's definitely going to include this hat so let's see what looks i can create here is our doll's first look. We are wearing the hat. Somehow it fits perfectly. But you know what's totes missing? A tote. Hold on, can we do a John Cena here? You can't see me. Good job, Jen. Let's golf clap. No! Next outfit! Here is our second look, and I'm really, really happy with this zipper because, once again, pointing out, it totally works. However, the zipper pull likes to turn and get stuck on us. It can be a little fussy, but it does, in fact, work. Uh, and after all that struggle, we're gonna open it so you can see I forgot a shirt. Whoops! But it totally looks great. And the best news is that this wig, just like the one we got with our first doll, does not look completely horrible when we add it because the plastic sort of looks like a headband. So there's hope, but just not for all the dolls. And now we'll try the hood. Okay, the hood doesn't really work with the hair, so let's just, oh no, it's got an egg. Okay, it, it, you know what? I, I like it. You know what though? Maybe the doll didn't want to wear a shirt. Maybe it was going old school rapper style. We have a shirt and apparently we're doing the robot and now we are ready to paint because we're wearing our vans that kind of look like Crocs as well as our white paint splattered dickies. And you know what? All painters need some aviators because I said so. We're gonna give the hair back with a little bit more length and lusciousness. And you know what would make this even better? A toque. Okay, the toque does not work. No, toque does not work, folks. The toque, maybe it's because I call it a toque. The beanie doesn't want to fit over my new Hermione hair. So we're just going to TI it. Look at that, old school rapper style. And now that I made space for this doll, I notice that there's a gap. Good thing I have just one more. Now our last doll. It's both happiness and sorrow all at once. What are those pants? Oh, it's a skirt. Okay. This time we have a half swoopy blonde hairstyle with a side shave, which I'll show off for you in a second. But we've also got brown eyebrows, blue eyes, a nude lip color, and a very lightly tanned skin complexion. Just like the other dolls, this one comes wearing a white tank top and a matching pair of shorts. And a closer look reveals that the paint is once again fantastic. And now we can even see that really cool hairstyle. The scalp is painted a light creamy brown and there's some lightning bolts cut into it. And the hair is pulled off to the left side with a lot of product. On this side, it kind of looks like a 90s mushroom cut, but like really, really wrong. And there's lightning bolts on this side too. And look at that. The hair starts really, really short and gradually gets longer so that it eventually ends up coming from the right side. It's like flock of seagulls, but without the swoop. This is not the hair you are looking for. Let's check out the accessories. First up, we have some brown boots and they've got lots of little details like stitches, straps, golden studs, and buckles. And underneath, they are just flat brown. I feel like we need to take a marker and write Andy, even though they're not cowboy boots. Here's our pants. These ones are gray, 
thin sweatpants with little black cuffs around the ankle. And there's no Velcro or anything, they just pull on and off with a little bit of elastic in the waistband. It looks pretty good, I'm not seeing any threads or anything like that. And the material itself feels pretty soft. Next up we have a skirt, and this one is long and white with a very large ruffle on the bottom. And it's covered in a ton of colorful scribbles in blue, orange, pink, yellow, dark pink, light blue, stuff like that. Our second pair of shoes is a very thick platformed pair of sandals with thick black straps and a buckle in front. And along the sides it looks like we've got pink, white, red, and yellow crayons, but honestly I think they're just stripes. We have an invisible jacket, and sadly when we put this on our doll it's gonna disappear. I'm just kidding. This time we have a shiny camo jacket in different colors of green. The collar, waist of the jacket, and the sleeves all have a bit of black soft fabric. And once again we have a little plastic zipper that does in fact open. And inside everything looks like it's stitched together quite nicely. Hey, look at that, it even does back up. I can't wait to help our doll disappear. Yes! We've got another pair of aviators. This time the plastic is silver and the frames are painted baby blue. Next up is our wig and this one is long, blonde, and curly on the bottom. Inside the plastic melting sections look a lot less terrifying than our last doll. Once again, it's nice and full with a great amount of rooting. We have a very thick and starchy pair of blue long denim shorts. On the front we have one silver button in the center and two small little pockets. And on the back we have one single piece of velcro holding it together. And a quick look inside tells me that everything is stitched together quite nicely. Woo! We have a very 70s looking yellow and brown short sleeve dress shirt. This one's got a nice collar, four silver buttons, and a ton of little flowers all over it. It kind of looks like a really old ugly yellow couch. And the left side of my shirt looks a little funny. I'm hoping it's just folded in on itself. And thankfully that's exactly what it is. And it opens in the front with two small pieces of velcro. And a quick peek inside reveals some pretty nice stitching. Once again this fabric is a little starchy but definitely not as bad as some of the others. Next we have our last pair of shoes and once again they resemble Zans. Oh my god, did I seriously? I, <laughs> I mean Vans. They look like Vans. I need rest. They are teal on top and have white soles on the bottom. This time we have a brown canvas backpack. It's got two long straps in the back so that you can wear it as a backpack. And it's got an overflap with two square silver buckles. It's held together by one small piece of Velcro. And I wonder if we could fit these big chunky knot crayon on shoes in it. And because that's all I buy apparently. It kind of looks like our bag is crooked but I'm thinking it's because the stitching is just not straight. Next up is our hat and this one is exactly like the light tan one we got earlier except it is black with silver straps around the middle. And lastly we have an elbow length long sleeve shirt and honestly I don't even know how to describe this shirt properly so I'm just gonna say that the sleeves are red and the rest of the shirt is striped horizontally with black and white lines. It opens at the back with one long strip of velcro and inside uh, it hurts my eyes but everything looks pretty good. A quick check of the the underclothes the doll was wearing reveals nice stitching and now we need to choose our final looks which may include invisibility. Here's my first look and right now it's almost like first day of school I'm 70s Crayola casual and um, I'm not really feeling it and I think it could be better. I'm gonna try to add the wig and see if we could pull off a long haired side shave. Okay definitely not. Let's try it a little more this way. I don't think so. If we add the hair straight on, it definitely just looks like a Halloween costume. Unfortunately, because this doll doesn't come with a lot of hair without using the wig, the plastic bit doesn't blend in well enough to make it look like a headband. Personally, I feel like this is one of those dolls that will look much better without the wig. Short hair all the way. But if you like it, go ahead. Let's try on the hat. Why does this remind me of Johnny Depp with Crayola sandals? I'll try another look, but this time I'm going to embrace the short hair. I can't see it. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. This time I have decided to pair up the white tank top with my camouflage jacket, the longish denim jeans, and my gorgeous teal vans, giving us our completed look, which I've decided to call Invisible Zans. Okay guys, here are all five of the dolls that I opened for you today, and honestly, I wish I had the sixth, but since I don't, let's just be grateful I got to check these out at all. In the end, I would definitely recommend these dolls. They offer great articulation and posability, and the accessories they come with are not only numerous, but they are also a fantastic quality. I had one or two small problems with the clothing, and honestly, if I didn't point them to you, you probably wouldn't have noticed. So in the end, I think that whether you're for or against the idea of a gender neutral or non-binary doll, at the very least, you have a blank canvas for your child to get creative with. When they need a girl doll, they can make a girl doll. If they need a boy doll, they can make a boy doll. If they want a doll that likes to layer up and wear skirts on top of pants with a really tacky couch looking dress shirt, they have that option. To them, I think this would just be a really exciting new doll where they could create whatever they want. Let the doll be what it needs to be for those who need 
need it to be. That sounded philosophical in my head. Just go with it. Okay guys, ow. That is it, the end of the creatable world. Or at least five out of the, oh that was right, six dolls. <laughs> if you know somebody who loves inclusivity, doll collecting, or my videos in general, then please share this one with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about the dolls, or if you have any suggestions that can make them even cooler. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!